Hi folks, just thought I would give you a quick rundown on how a flat plate heat exchanger works. So I've got a really, really super basic uh, hot water hookup here in this crude drawing. Uh, the flat plate here is oriented the same way as I have in the picture. Uh, we'd have a pump on the furnace. If I can just get a little closer. Coming in, typically this would be insulated pipe, one inch flow. Come in through the flat plate, which would be this port through the flat plate, come back out and straight back to the furnace. And that pump, would just I would typically just put it on a cord and plug it in in the back of the furnace to keep that flat plate hot. Then, on the domestic water side, I'll show you on here. So the dotted lines would represent the old route. Domestic water would have went into the electric water heater. If it came in through the water heater, get heated by the electric elements and out to the house, we would cut that off, route it over here through the flat plate, in the opposite direction, exiting on the hot end, where your incoming hottest water is, that these two ports don't mix. There's plates that separate, I'll show you that. So you're counterflowing, exiting on the hot end. That's very important that you counterflow opposite direction. This will come out, the side of the flat plate I use, probably 140, maybe 135, depending on your pump speed, and dump into the water heater. As long as you take a couple showers a day, you'll have unlimited hot water, it won't cool off in the tank. And you can take 20 showers a day, it doesn't matter, it's unlimited, as long as you keep wood in the furnace. Then on this return line, going back to the furnace, where you tie into the other heating loads, a heat pump or all kinds of stuff. Pools, house, the house heat, you know, heat for your house, whatever. Um, so yeah, this flat plate here is a 3x8, three by, three by 30 plate. Uh, I've got 1 inch PEX outlets on the stove side, three quarter PEX outlets on the domestic side, so you can crimp, crimp PEX pipe directly to the flat plate, you don't have any threading. Uh, if you look at the end here, you can see how the plates are brazed together, um, separating every other space for the furnace water and every other space for your domestic water, so they flow in the spaces, but they don't actually mix. Uh, you can see some of the fins down inside there. Uh, there's a side view all the plates braised together. So it's an excellent little on-demand water heater. Um, if you let your fire go out, you know, in summertime, cold water just feeds through, stays cold, and your electric elements are right there to back it up. Nothing you gotta do. So that is a super simple way to hook up domestic hot water on basically any brand of outdoor furnace. Um, I use a 30 plate so it doesn't restrict flow but I don't go for the super 5 by 12s or something this is a 3 by 8 it's plenty big enough to get all the hot water you need um, but it has enough spaces or plates that it doesn't choke down the flow on the stove side of things um, if I'd use a bigger one instead of having 135 or 40 going in here you'd have 160 and then you've got to use a tempering valve and scald, you'll be scalding yourself so that's just why I use what I use these things are super simple um, they work really well. Uh, one little add-on here, often if you're wanting to be able to fill your furnace from in the house, you could just cut into your cold or hot on your domestic side, come around, put a ball valve on it and tee into the stove line, and you can open a ball valve and feed water out through the stove, which is nice not having to drag a hose through the snow to fill it, and you can blow the air out of your lines on your initial startup with a fill valve. So, it's another little tip there. and. Um, yeah, these flat plates are awesome. I don't know who invented them, but they are really good heat exchangers. Thanks for watching.